there have been some really bad ideas to teach about Black history throughout February. I'm not sure that we've ever lived in a world that's so divided. And that's not to say that I've never seen racism. In fact, I see it basically every day, just not from the sources we're told it comes from. Our problems are coming from the highly educated, those who really would put babies in blackface in a daycare center. The fact is, is that young children do not care until they're taught to. So why would we take that innocence away from young children? If you really want to teach your small child about race, then do the opposite. Make it natural. If you live in a predominantly monolithic area, then make the drive to go to a different area where your kids will see and interact with other children without you needing to point out that, oh, look, that child looks different than you. Simply go out and let your children play together. Look for a friendly face and start a conversation. Do not bring up race, just be a kind human. The second thing that's great for introducing race to small children are picture books. And I'm not talking about Ibram X. Kendi's anti-racist baby. I'm talking about books that just say baby. And as you flip through the page, you see babies doing different things and babies that look different. You never have to point it out to your child. It just normalizes that people can look different and that we're all just humans. As your children grow, pick up a bunch of diverse books. Ideally books before 2015. When I was little, my favorite book was a version of Cinderella with a Chinese storyline. I didn't know anything about Chinese culture. I just knew that I loved the artwork. It's a myth that children must see themselves reflected in everything that they read in order to learn. In fact, that can lead to very self-obsessed children with a very limited worldview. As children grow, simply answer their questions. Don't make a huge deal about their curiosity. Just answer them in an age-appropriate way. When my son and his best friend were about three years old, they were taking a bath together. My son looked at him and said, you're brown. The little boy ducked his head and said, yeah. I know. My son then looked up at him and said, well, I'm pink, except for when I'm cold, then I'm purple. And that was the end of it. And the, and the color of their skin was never an issue more than the 20 seconds in the bathtub. When my son was a little bit older in second grade, he read a book called The Mad Men of Piney Woods. It shows the relationship of two boys in the early 20th century. This book is beautiful and simply highlights friendship, but it does address race and the Irish son's grandmother is a bigot. I remember clearly my son coming up to him saying, mommy, you wouldn't be allowed to live in this time. I told him, you're right. Back then it would not have been okay for me and your dad to be married, but today is not the same time as back then. Today, you are like a hybrid, like those cars you really like, you get the best of both worlds. We don't have to be afraid to talk to our children about race. And in today's culture, it seems pertinent to do so. The thing is, is that if we don't have conversations with our kids, then the wrong information is going to come to them through school or through social media. The place where we need to be careful is imposing the sins of the fathers on our children today. When we impose upon our children a resentfulness, it's no different than a former tactic used in Asian and European countries. They taught children to obsess over their own groups and to hate anyone who was not like them. Here, it's being done by race refuse to fall for it. Instead, commit to educating yourself and your children. But if you are secure in your knowledge of truth and facts, it is so much harder for them to erase that. If we leave it up to others, if we refuse to have these conversations with our kids, then they will be told a different story. They will be told stories of the oppressed and the oppressor. If we educate them, we can share with them not only stories of overcoming, but of stories of working together and achieving. We can teach them that they are capable. History is important and unity is a gift. If we don't teach history, someone else will. Let's make sure that doesn't happen. I'm Kareb Marcel, and this was five minutes or less.